The 2014 college football season is complete, so here on Mark Rogers TV, it's time to rate and compare the Power Five conferences, and let's start with the SEC. So what we did here is we threw out the conference games because you cannot uh, judge or evaluate a conference based on the in-conference games because every conference is what? They're 500 because every conference wins the conference game and loses the conference game. So once the conference play begins, it's very difficult to judge these teams and these conferences. You have to go to the games played against each other outside the conference against the other Power 5 conferences. It's a small sample size because they don't play enough games against each other, but by the time the bowl season's over, we've got a decent sample size to go by. So let's start with the SEC. The SEC played 22 games against the other Power 5 conferences, 22 games including the bowl games. And the SEC won 11, and the SEC lost 11. So what does this mean? Let's put it into context and look at each individual matchup and look at it as a whole. Because, for example, the reason we're doing this, let's take a look at the last regular season uh, weekend in 2014. The SEC played the ACC four times. And what happened? The ACC won all four games. Great for the ACC. They won the games on the field. 4-0 is 4-0. But if you dig a little bit deeper, we see that the SEC should not have been expected to win those games because they were high seeds in the ACC playing low seeds in the SEC. The only comparable seeding matchup was Georgia, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, the ACC number two seed, taking on Georgia, who would be the four seed in the SEC. So that's a comparable matchup, so that's a good win for the ACC. But other than that, yes, the wins were on the field, credit the ACC, but they have to be put into context. Florida, an eight seed, losing to Florida State, a one seed in the ACC, and the other matchups were similar in Louisville defeating Kentucky and Clemson over South Carolina, where Clemson was the three seed in the ACC, South Carolina a lowly 11 seed in the SEC. So the reason we did this is we match up all the teams, all the games, and we look at all the results. So in the 11 wins that the SEC won over the other Power 5 conferences, the SEC teams in those games were 94 and 50 overall against the Power 5, 83 and 59. More telling is the conference record. So those SEC teams that won those 11 games went 48 and 42 in the SEC, and they defeated teams in the other Power 5 conferences that went 54 and 40. A little bit better. So what this tells us is that the SEC teams beat better teams in the other conferences. Teams seeded higher in those conferences. So this looks good for the SEC right now. So this number over here is the seeding. So we took the seeds in the SEC. Alabama was the one seed, Missouri the two seed. So regardless of what you think about Missouri as maybe not being as good as Mississippi State, Ole Miss, or Georgia, Mizzou is the two seed in the SEC because they finished not only in the championship game, but with a 7-1 conference record. We actually counted it as a 7-2 conference record with the loss to Alabama in the SEC championship game. So if you go through all these 11 games, the average seed for the SEC was 7.1, and they defeated an average seeding in the other Power Five of 6.3. So they toppled uh, quite a few higher seeds. So, so let's look at the individual games here real quick. The wins for the SEC. For example, you've got LSU, a 7 seed, defeated Wisconsin, a 3 seed out of the Big Ten. Uh, Auburn, a 6 seed, defeated Kansas State, a 3 seed. Uh, Georgia, a four, defeated Clemson, a three. I won't go through the entire list, but in most of these games, the SEC lower seed defeated a higher seed from the other conferences. So that's pretty much how it played out right there for the SEC. Okay, the 11 losses in the SEC uh, against the Power Five, this is interesting to note as well. The SEC teams went 52 and 30, so that's a pretty strong showing for the SEC in regards to these were pretty powerful SEC teams losing these 11 teams, these 11 games against the other Power Five. They were losing to a, uh, a Power Five aggregate record of 61 and 26. So this is where it really shows up. 
the average seed for the SEC in losing these 11 games was 6.4. An average six seed in the SEC lost to a 3.7 seed. These were really strong teams that the SEC lost to, and we saw it mostly in bowl play. You're talking Ohio State, uh, TCU, and Florida State. So you're talking three one seeds that the SEC lost to. Also, two losses to Georgia Tech. So Georgia lost to Georgia Tech. And also in the Orange Bowl, Mississippi State lost to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, the two seed in the ACC. So that's a rather strong loss uh, for the SEC. There were really no horrible losses other than <laughs> that really, really bad loss that the SEC had. Mizzou, the two seed, losing to Indiana, the 13 seed in the Big Ten, of course. That's a bad one. Otherwise, you had the likes of Louisville, a four seed in the ACC, defeating a 13 seed in Kentucky. You had Oklahoma, a four seed in the Big 12, uh, defeating uh, Tennessee, a 10 seed in the SEC. Uh, again, Clemson, a three seed, defeating South Carolina, an 11 seed in the SEC. We also adjusted the seeds slightly because keep in mind that the SEC, the ACC, and the Big Ten have 14 teams. So a five seed, let's say, in the SEC is not the same as a five seed in the Big 12 that only has 10 teams. So that five is five out of 10 in seeding in the Big 12 versus a seven um, in the SEC. So you had to adjust it that, that uh, again, that five seed in the Big 12 is five out of 10 teams. So it's the same as a seven seed out of 14 teams in the SEC. So quality wins, quality losses. The quality of the win average in the SEC is 6.3. That's pretty strong because consider, uh, again, a lot of lower seeds in the SEC defeated higher seeds in other conferences. Again, 7.1 to 6.3. So it comes out to a 6.3. We won't go through all the math because it's it's quite confusing. But trust me, 6.3 I think will test out pretty strong. We've got to do this with the other conferences to really see what these numbers mean. And the same thing, the losses. The losses weren't horrible for the SEC. The big one, again, Indiana defeating Mizzou. Uh, other than that, no bad losses. No other higher seeds or lower seeds in other conferences defeated higher seeds in the SEC. Ohio State, the one, defeated Alabama, the one. Uh, Wisconsin, the three, defeated Auburn, the six. Tough to rate Notre Dame because they don't play in a conference. We gave them a five seed. That seems to be pretty fair for an eight and five Notre Dame team that defeated a seven seed in LSU. Again, Georgia Tech, a two seed, defeated the three and the four in Mississippi State and in Georgia. TCU, the one, defeated Ole Miss, the five. Uh, Florida State, the one, over Florida, the eight. We talked about the ACC games, and also Clemson defeated uh, South Carolina, a three, over an 11. So these are the numbers we have. We're going to run through the other Power Five conferences and see how these numbers stack up against the Big Ten, the Big 12, the ACC, and the Pac-12. Would love to hear what you have to say. Again, these don't take into account uh, the games out of conference against, let's say, the American Athletic Conference. So South Carolina and Florida defeated East Carolina. Uh, there were other games. The most embarrassing for the SEC would be Temple, the sixth seed out of the American Athletic, defeating Vanderbilt uh, out of the SEC. But we had to keep it as a closed experiment within the Power Five to make it all make sense. Uh, the other big matchup, that would uh, tie into this outside of the Power Five is, of course, the Boise State game against Ole Miss. Good win for the Rebels and the SEC in defeating a Mountain West team that went on to win the Fiesta Bowl. But again, would love to hear what you have to say about this and uh, maybe some, some other metrics that we could provide here on Mark Rogers TV.